I suppose this was bound to happen sooner or later, but, you know, eventually I got to do more stuff than just backlight kits. Um, so anyway, a company by the name of Extreme Rate reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to take a look at some of their new Game Boy Color shells on my uh, channel here and give them a review, and in exchange they would give me a shell. Uh, so, long story short, here we are. Uh, <laughs> They sent me this shell here because um, they wanted me to basically give them a shout out on my channel here. Uh, so I guess we're going to take a look. Well, I'm going to take a look and um, I'll let you know if I like it or not. Um, first thing, I'm going to be comparing it. Uh, I my The very first shell that I reviewed on my channel, hell, even the second shell that I reviewed on my channel, it, Game Boy Micro and then uh, Retro Modding's DMG shell, um, though the latter was it wasn't really its own video. Anyway, both of those I was comparing them to an OEM shell from Nintendo, and that's not quite fair to the aftermarket shells because um, Nintendo builds their shells to a, a much different uh, level of, of of quality than any of the aftermarket shells that I've seen. Um, have ever been built to. It's just, you know, they're they're pumping these things out in the millions, so they have to get it right the first time. Uh, whereas the aftermarket manufacturers are pumping these things out, you know, maybe a thousand or two thousand at a time, uh, so they can they can make the little tweaks along the way. Um, and not to mention, there's a cost that comes with low volume. I know a thousand cells sounds like a lot, but a million compared to a thousand, you know, which one's more. But anyway, um, so we're going to be comparing it to this aftermarket shell that I got from Retro Game Repair Shop uh, and this other aftermarket shell that I got on uh, AliExpress recently. Uh, this one in particular is pre-trimmed for an IPS kit. I don't know why there's a Game Boy Pocket LCD in there, uh, but as you can see, this one's already got cutouts for an IPS kit. So I'll be taking a look at this at some point um, with an IPS kit, just not today. But anyway, and then this is the one that I did the uh, Midwest Embedded backlight kit in. But that's that's enough, uh, that's enough rambling, I think, at this point. Let's go ahead and take a look at the shell. So before I even open the box, this is what you get when you order one of these things. Um, and I just want to say, this thing is so god awful. It's it's like trend. It, it's like an overflow error. It's so bad that it's good. Um, I I needed to have it. I just I needed it. Anyway, here's here's what they sent me. <laughs> Set that aside. So. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at what the kit comes with first. Uh, looks like you get a little card. Um, as far as customer service goes, apparently you reach out to them on social media. Um, there you go. This is what it is. I, I mean, I, I think it's pretty cool that this comes with a warranty, but on something like this, I usually don't expect to get a warranty. I mean, that's... They are what they are, you know? Um, okay, it comes with a few tools here. Oop, there was a screw in there. Two screws, three screws that I didn't see. Hopefully there were just three screws. Um, but anyway, it looks like it comes with the tiniest uh, Phillips driver and a decently sized tri-wing driver. We'll, we'll try both of these screws when I put this, to, or screwdrivers when I put this together, but I don't have very high hopes for this uh, Phillips one. Uh, and it also comes with a little pry tool. Um, quite frankly, whenever I get these with electronics kits, I usually just throw them right in the fuck it bucket because they're usually garbage. Um, this one looks to be a different mold than the other ones that I've gotten before. I say I throw them out, but I'm looking for one right now. Uh, I don't have any. Um, I like the uh, 
the other pry tools better. Um, like these style, you can get them on AliExpress in, in green, black, and orange. Uh, or you can get them from iFixit. The iFixit ones are a lot better, but for the price, these things are still pretty hard to beat. Uh, but, I don't know. I'll try it out at some point, but probably not with this build, because I don't know what I would use it for. Um, okay, we also got some new membranes. All right, some buttons, the rest of the screws. These buttons don't look too fantastic, but... Oh, here's, here's something. The uh, IR cover is molded solid. It's not transparent plastic. So if you're one of the two people that still uses IR in your Game Boy Color, uh, you'll need to use your original IR shield. Um, personally, I'm really not. Uh, that's actually what I ended up doing with this shell here. Uh, this one comes with the same molded IR cover. Uh, this one, I think, also comes with that same IR cover. Yeah, so I guess it's basically the standard at this point. I can't really knock them for it, but usually with the plastics, I always try and say use what, you know, reuse your old buttons, reuse your old plastics, because they're usually better. But for the purpose of this review, I'll, I'll, I'll try it out, see what happens. Uh, that step aside, we've got the cart reader shielding and the button contacts. Nothing too special. And then the lens. Uh, seems to be pretty generic aftermarket. Exact same one that my other one came with. Alright, now let's take a look at this marvelous shell. This is... Oh, uh, this is even better in person. Oh, uh, this is lovely. I love it. I mean, it's so bad, but I love it. Oh! I completely forgot to look at the sticker. Uh, but it looks like just one of those generic ones. Okay. Uh, even the battery. <laughs> okay, so... I've always been fascinated by how they do this. It's just white molded plastic. Pull it apart, you probably see... Yeah, even in here. Looks like there's some shavings or something in here. I have to clean that out, but that's no big deal. Um, but anyway, this is just white molded plastic, and then they they paint it with this like conductive uh, silver, well not silver, but this conductive like graphite paint, and then they just electroplate it. Um, but you can't just straight up electroplate gold on there first. You have to electroplate like uh, tin, then like silver, and then you can go gold or something like that. Don't don't quote me on that. I. I've never electroplated before in my life. I've just always been fascinated by the concept. Um, but yeah, I mean, it. I think this is a new mold. I don't, uh, maybe not. I've just never noticed these little uh, tabs on the battery covers there. Because they're not on the OEM one, or maybe they are, and this one's just so worn down I can't tell. Uh, Got another one right here. Yeah, I, th I think the OEM one has those tabs. Mine, are, mine are just so worn down you can't even see it. But uh, oops, that's what I get for putting that on my keyboard. Now, as far as the actual shell goes, um, of course this thing is going to be a fingerprint magnet, um, but that's kind of par for the course. I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> Uh, it's kind of disappointing um, right off the hop here. There's a uh, spot where the finish, there's just a gap in the finish. Uh, I don't know if that like chipped off or if it just was never finished properly or what. Um, and then inside the uh, little lanyard cover the electroplating didn't quite take I'm guessing that's because like I said when they spray these with a conductive graphite paint uh, I'm guessing it just didn't really get in there too well uh, but what I'm looking for right now are 
I'm looking at the seams, you know, seeing how well this shell mates up. A little while ago, I did a, um, I, I basically did one of these with some of the Retro 6 shells, and I was looking at it. On these, you could see in the gaps, like they just completely miss paint, or even up near the top, it doesn't actually quite line up until you have it screwed together. But on this shell, you know, it seems to, it seems to fit quite nicely together. Uh, that's always one of the hallmarks of a good mold, is when you take your plastic shell apart, it just, you know, goes back together. Um, so, I mean, so far, I'm, I'm really impressed. I mean, the text is pretty low quality. I think that happens, well, like I said, they gotta paint the shell and then there's multiple layers that are electroplated onto it. So unfortunately that just, that blurs the, uh, the text out, you know, blurs the quality there. Um, but I don't know, man, I, I'm so stoked to get this thing together. This is so, this is so wonderful. Um, I think, I think for the purpose of the review, man, um, I might end up using my OEM hardware instead of using the, uh, hardware it came with, like, instead of using the screws, uh, which I still don't know why it came with these three extra screws. Oh wait, those are probably the motherboard screws. Wait, no. There's motherboard screws in here. Yeah, I don't know why it came with those three extra screws. So we'll have to let me know in the comments or something, but let's go ahead and get this screwed in here. We can try out the screwdriver. And so, okay, this is, this is one of the things that um, not a lot of people think about, but I do because I'm weird like that. Uh, these cheap tools, uh, where you get a screw designed for one size bit and then a driver that's in a completely different size. This will work. That does seat in there good enough, but look at how much wiggle room there is. You probably can't see that too well. It's, it's always best to just get, you know, spend, spend a little now, get yourself a good driver set, and then you don't have to worry about that. This fits on there perfectly. There's zero wiggle room because this is a completely different sized bit. Look at that. Let me focus. So this, much better. Um, but this will work, you just have to be careful. Again, one of the problems though is, I'm just going to do one with this, is this is a brand new shell. Um, you cannot mold the uh, threads into the plastic with injection molding. It just, it doesn't really work that way. So the first time you're screwing the screw in, it's basically tapping its own threads, which requires a little bit of extra force. Uh, but credit where credit is due, it, it is working. I'm just terrified that I'm gonna strip this out. But of course, a um, regular screwdriver is going to be better. There's just more to grip. That's what it comes down to. But I guess, I mean, if you don't have a good set of tools, this will work. Just, you know, don't. Don't hang on to it, don't rely on it. If you ever need to use it for something, best to get an actual set of tools. Okay, we'll pop this in here. Oh, we gotta bend this out. It looks like it's already bent out. This little tab has to be bent out, otherwise it's not gonna catch. Let me pop it in. Do I have that backwards? No, that's right. There it goes. A little snap in there. All right, I think that's where, uh, excuse me. 
Oh, I just noticed another spot that's kind of a bummer. Um, I think this is where I'm going to leave this part off. I'm going to go ahead and pause now, um, working on another video actually, where I'm going to do an actual build of a Game Boy Color in this shell. Uh, I'm, I'm going to cut this video and unless something remarkable pops up during that build, I mean you'll just have to watch that video. But, I mean, if something remarkable pops up, like I, I find that the Game Boy Color just doesn't even fit in here, then, you know, I'll put that in this video. But otherwise, if you don't see anything, then all went well. Uh, but when I come back, I'm going to have played with this thing for a few weeks, and we'll report back on, on some of the things that I've noticed. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, one more thing I do want to mention. I, I started talking about this, but I think I got distracted. Uh, because these are white plastic underneath, when the finish chips off and wears away, it's going to be white underneath. I would have preferred if it were black, but I totally understand why they do white. Um, if they do white, not necessarily for this shell, because the coverage doesn't really matter that much, but they do have other shells that are painted, like they have this pink soft touch one, or this like this really cool uh, blue purple chame chameleon shell. Uh, I really like that one too. Um, for paint, it's easier if you start with a lighter color. You just need less paint and less primer to get your desired finish. But anyway, so yeah, that'll be. I think that'll be a detriment long term. But otherwise, I think it's. It's fine for this. Quite frankly, if you're buying a Game Boy Color shell in this color, you're probably not buying it to take it everywhere. You know, it's probably not going to see a lot of wear. It's probably going on a shelf, and that's where it's living. And quite frankly, as soon as I'm done, you know, really playing with this thing, that's basically what this one's going to do too. But otherwise, yeah, I'm going to go do my build, and then I'll be back with my findings in a week or two or so. I don't know. Well, I guess for you guys, it'll be a few seconds. All right, I said it'd be a couple weeks, but it actually ended up only being about a week. Um, to be honest, I've, I've already played with it plenty. I don't think playing with it anymore is going to teach me anything new. Um, so basically what I've been doing, I've been carrying this thing around uh, with me to work, uh, throwing it in my backpack, letting it you know, kind of rumble around with everything in there, and, you know, actually playing it on occasion. And, um, well, first off, I swapped the buttons out. I couldn't take it. I the aftermarket buttons that come with this shell, they're they're no bueno. I don't like them at all. Um, they work if you have literally no other option. But if you still have your OEM buttons, which you should if you're reshelling your Game Boy Color, um, use those. I also did not use the shell that it came with or the lens that it came with. Uh, I used the lens that came with the backlight kit that I ended up installing in this, and that install went swimmingly. Um, but yeah, just highly recommend use your original membrane, use your original buttons, um, power switch, and even the IR window. IR window didn't make that big of a difference, to be honest. Uh, let me pull up the other one here. except that the replacement is not physically long enough. If you look at the cutout, you can see that the that the, um, the cutout for the IR window is uh, a little bit bigger than the IR window that they provide. Um, the OEM one does fit perfectly fine. Mine did unfortunately have a crack in it that I ended up gluing back together and doesn't really matter too much because it's just a touch sensor for this kit anyhow. Uh, which I guess leads me to my next point. If you're using a backlight kit with this shell that has touch sensors, um, yeah, it's not going to work through this coating, unfortunately. There are workarounds like, for example, using the IR window or in uh, if you're if you have some copper tape that you can solder a wire to, like this, to make your own touch sensor, you can throw it 
under the LCD there's a spot right in the middle of the shell where there's no coating and it'll work through the lens so you can put a touch sensor there and then just touch on the lens and it'll work just fine uh, so this kit in particular has two touch sensors so I had to use all of my available spots there I probably could have fit both under the lens right in the middle but then I would have them right next to each other and I'd probably often hit one when I meant to hit the other or something like that um, but ultimately just you know, wear and tear bringing this thing around. Uh, the finish has started to chip off right there and right there. I don't know if it was rubbing against something in my bag or what. I wasn't overly rough with it, but I wasn't trying to be, you know, ginger and gentle and I wasn't putting it in a case and everything. And, you know, when I was setting it down on the on a hard surface, I would do, you know, something like that just to I mean, like, I'm not slamming it, I'm just putting it down, but, you know, I want to try and test the durability of the coating, see if I can get it to flake off or anything, and, I mean, aside from this, where it probably slid around on a surface, it's completely fine. I don't notice any uh, corresponding wear on here, uh, probably because I had a cartridge in it, so it would have put wear on the cartridge instead, and there's not even anywhere in the cartridge slot yet. Granted, I haven't put very many games in this because I've been using my uh, EverDrive, so I just kind of put that in and left it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it plays like you'd expect. Um, I guess I'm just going back to the first part of my video here uh, where my only real nitpicks are the things I already pointed out like this spot where the finish just never got applied, this spot where the finish never got applied, and the fact that it's a horrible fingerprint magnet, but I went into this fully expecting that, um, and I suspect anyone who's seriously considering this color is already fully expecting that too. Uh, you'll have to carry around a microfiber lens if you ever want to show it, or lens, cloth if you ever want to show it off to your friends or co-workers, which, why would you? They won't get it. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> um, but, I mean, otherwise it, it works perfectly fine. Um, I said I would end up comparing it to the uh, Pokemon Center Game Boy uh, shell that I got from Retro Game Repair Shop and this other clear shell that I got off of AliExpress. And as it turns out, all three of these shells are the exact same mold. Um, I'll post some pictures in the description, but if we just pull the battery covers off of all three, I mean, you can, you can take a look and see the markings are the same on all three. They're all 1-3. Uh, you can see the ejector pins are all in the exact same location. Um, yeah, it's, it's stuff like that all over all the shells, not just the battery covers. I just don't really feel like taking all three of these apart again. Um, and you can even mix and match if you wanted to. I don't recommend it, but you can. Um, so yeah, do I recommend this shell? That depends. Can you, can you handle a gold Game Boy Color? If so, then yeah, absolutely. This is a wonderful shell. Um, just keep in mind that you'll probably want to use your OEM buttons, um, OEM plastics. The screws it came with, I have zero problems with them. I didn't have any issues with them stripping. They are slightly different size compared to OEM, um, but even still, all of my bits still worked. Uh, this is also an aftermarket shell, but it still has uh, OEM screws in it. And yeah, quite frankly, I this just, it looks so wonderful, I think. Uh, ultimately, I'm probably going to end up putting this screen kit in this Game Boy so I can uh, use that wonderful gold lens that I had. Uh, there's also, you know what, let me go grab them, hang on. All right, here we go, sorry. You can use the lens it comes with. It's perfectly serviceable. It's just a generic plastic aftermarket lens, but there are so many more options for aftermarket lenses. Uh, this one, not very fond of, but okay, it's there. Um, 
this one is what I'm is what I'm thinking about. I I want to use this lens, but it's a full size lens, so it won't work with the backlight kit. I haven't. Well, it will. It'll just not look very good. Um, but look at that gold text, man. I think it looks really good. There's another lens coming out pretty soon uh, that I think has like black text or white text or something, but the border itself is gold. I think that'll look pretty sweet. Uh, of course, you can always go with the classic, just completely unbranded. Uh, but what I was thinking is one of these would probably look pretty damn slick. Um, I don't really want to peel the protective film off it, but this is one of those like mirror finish uh, silver lenses. I think this would look fantastic. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, sorry, this, this was kind of rambly, and I know, I'm sorry I, I started off with pointing out all these flaws, but that's that's who I am. That's what I notice when I start looking for looking at stuff like this. When I'm given something and told to scrutinize it, well, that's what I do. Um, but all in all, yeah, this is, if you're in the market for the gaudiest aftermarket shell, which coincidentally I actually was, and as long as you're okay with it being an aftermarket shell, then yeah, it's, it's lovely, man. I'm digging it. I, I hope they make more, to be honest. I hope this comes out for more systems. This is just so wonderful. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, I'll throw links down into the in the description if you guys want to pick up one of these shells. Um, there's going to be a whole section of links from Extreme Rate that they've asked me to add. Um, Non-affiliate links, of course. Um, there's also going to be a few other links to some of the cool lenses that I think would look really sick on this shell. And I'll throw a link to the actual build that I did in this shell. Um, I'm probably going to end up uploading this video first, so that link might come later, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's lovely, man. I'm really digging it. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic, fantastic night.